So when we talk about uh, management, um, you know, antenatal diagnosis is really the mainstay given uh, the technology and, and access to prenatal care that we have today. Maternal alpha fetoprotein or AFP is sampled by blood testing, typically done during uh, the early portion of the second trimester. An elevated AFP level uh, can be predictive of a higher chance of a neural tube defect. Now, there are certainly other congenital anomalies that can have an elevated AFP, but if the predicted risk is higher than a specific threshold value, and that is typically 1 to 500, then high-resolution ultrasound is performed. Ultrasound or fetal MRI. Ultrasound can identify the level of the lesion, the presence of lower extremity deformities, and actually movement, um, Chiari 2 malformation, and hydrocephalus, all of which I'll talk about, so don't, don't get too caught up on that right now. So when we talk about counseling after an uh, antenatal diagnosis of, of myelomeningocele, counseling is, is very important, and this can be carried out by obstetricians uh, and maternal fetal medicine physicians, but uh, typically it's, it's done by pediatric neurosurgery. And the reason is, is because we're the ones caring for these children after, after they're born. And so uh, for, for parents that choose to carry to term, um, the long-term morbidity and specifically the neurological and non-neurologic morbidity should be understood and clearly delineated. Uh, first and foremost is hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus, uh, you know, where there's uh, an increased amount of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain um, and difficulty with drainage of this, whether it's overproduction or under absorption, um, you know, it's, it's a condition that needs to be dealt with and treated if it's present. And this can require um, either placement of a ventricular to peritoneal shunt, which is the most common treatment, most historic treatment. And now there's newer treatments, including endoscopic third ventriculostomy with or without choroid plexus cauterization. So this ultimately in up to 90% of children with myelomeningocele will require attention at some point, And it's a very important topic. Lower extremity dysfunction. This is typically based on the level of the lesion. So prenatal ultrasound and fetal MRI are really wonderful at telling us the level of the lesion. And based on this, we can make educated guesses and predictions. And in fact, ultrasound can be quite accurate in uh, determining the level of function that a child has just based on routine ultrasound. Urinary continence and incontinence, um, you know, based on the level of the lesion, whether or not the child will have any semblance of continence, and if not, what that looks like for long term in terms of clean intermittent catheterization um, and subsequent need for uh, monitoring for kidney disease and things like that. Same deal with uh, fecal incontinence um, in terms of the neural structures. Uh, they're intimately related with both of those phenomenon. Chiari 2 malformation is a, is a Chiari malformation, which is herniation of the cerebellar tonsils and tissue. Chiari 2 is very specific to children who have myelomeningocele. And um, so there are certain implications associated with this, including brainstem dysfunction, um, ventilator dependence uh, in, in very severe cases, cranial nerve dysfunction, um, sleep apnea, things like that, and cognitive impairment. So there's lots of uh, things that need to be discussed very openly with the family when it comes to myelomeningocele. So when we talk about perinatal care, uh, things that we want to know are, are the size of the lesion. And, you know, how big is the defect? Is it is it one by one, two by two? Um, if uh, the child is born and the sac or the placoat is ruptured, many centers will initiate antibiotics, though I think this may be a little more of a historic practice. Um, you want to cover the area with a moist dressing and you want to keep it as clean as possible until closure is performed. From a neurological standpoint, a detailed exam, including cranial nerve dysfunction or function, is, is really important. Lower extremity function, uh, we want to know exactly what muscle groups are noted. Your uh, pediatric neurosurgery staff are going to ask you what level of the lesion is anatomically and what le level of the lesion is from a function standpoint. And this is very important because it portends what kind of function they'll have later in life, life specifically their ability to ambulate versus not. Um, do they have good rectal tone? Um, how does their fontanelle feel? Um, what's their head circumference? 
from an orthopedic standpoint, you want to look at lower extremity movement, uh, look if there's any deformity, uh, clubbing of the feet, scoliosis, any gibbous deformities, which is a significant kyphotic deformity in the back, as that can have uh, ramifications when it comes to care um, uh, for the child in the supine position. Um, excuse me, sorry. And then urologic dysfunction. So you want to, uh, if the child is not thought to be continent and you want to uh, talk about getting a clean intermittent catheterization routine or schedule initiated and uh, routinely a renal ultrasound is done as a baseline and urodynamics can be performed uh, to look at the bladder contractility, its ability to fill, its ability to empty, uh, things like that. So closure. So what's our role here? Well, if a child has an open neural tube defect, you need to close it. Um, the reason is, is because you want to create a barrier between the outside world and the central nervous system. And the, the primary goal of that is to prevent meningitis and further neurological decline. This is typically done 24 to 48 hours after birth. There is some evidence that waiting longer than 72 hours increases bacterial colonization by a significant amount. And uh, it's also crucial to preserve neural tissue and vascular supply as the tissue is, is fresh. Uh, as it becomes more friable and exposed to air, it can cause these things to uh, subsequently necrose and, and you know, cause uh, further damage. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.